Hey, I'm Nick Caruso and you're watching This Week in Gear. These are just a few of the highlights we covered this week, including an authentication app that's way more secure than whatever it is you're currently using. We get the answer to the question, does whiskey go bad? It's not good news, by the way. And it looks like Toyota may officially announce the chunky TJ Cruiser as a production vehicle this spring. Now, if you're interested in any more of the info about what we talk about this episode, make sure you visit the description below for links to our online coverage. And as usual, come visit gearpatrol.com for all the rest. Let's get started. By now, if you're not using two-factor authentication to verify your identity and protect your data when you're logging into and out of profiles and apps and websites, you really, really, truly should be. Two-factor is just what it sounds like. Single factor is just a password. Two-factor is a password plus something like entering a code that's sent to you by a text message by whatever you're logging into. It goes a long, long way in boosting security and verifying your ID, whether you're using Dropbox or saving up Bitcoins. But our tech editor, Eric Limer is adamant that there's an even better way. It's far safer too. He talked with Nabil Saeed, who is one of the people behind the security app, Authy, and uh, they spoke about why that product is superior to what we've been using with these text messages and such. Here are the basics. Authy is a two-factor authentication app, but it doesn't rely on a code sent via text message, which Saeed says is pretty susceptible to attacks. Basically, all a data thief would need to do in that case is intercept a text message, which is possible if, say, they have your phone number, they call your cell provider to say you have lost your phone and need a new phone number, and then boom, your two-factor texts now go to a number of that thief's choosing. That's called a SIM swap, and there are even ways to do massive numbers of SIM swaps in bulk. Not good. Another huge upside to Authy and similar apps is that no internet connection is required. So very simply, Authy generates its own codes. Those codes are time sensitive and they're not stored on a server, nor are they delivered to your phone. They're just already there. That's safer and you can use Authy in airplane mode. There are a lot of apps like this and some of them are made by the big guys like Google. But Authy, as Eric points out, is completely independent of other platforms. Among many other benefits, that allows Authy to innovate quickly. And one huge plus to an Authy account is yet another level of protection. The service will bundle all of your accounts with passwords together, back them up in the cloud, and protect them with one single very strong password. You'll always get your accounts back if you lose or switch phones. So, if you use two-factor authentication, let us know what your experience is so far. Pop it in the comments below. Do you have tips, um, horror stories? I hope not. But regardless, we'd love to hear from you. Well, I hope you're sitting down. I've got some sort of bad news for you about that bottle of whiskey you've been savoring. It's a goner. We can't save it. Whiskey goes bad. And it's a big bummer for all of us. We, we love whiskey here at Gear Patrol. To get more information about this stressful matter, our editor Will Price talked with Colin Blake, who is the Director of Spirits Education at Moonshine University. He learned a lot, and Will has literally not stopped crying since. But we're going to make it through this. The good news is that there are some easy steps you can take to preserve your booze as long as possible. And here is what you need to know. First thing. It's all about oxidization. So a sealed bottle is going to last a long time, but once you open a bottle of whiskey and expose the liquor to the air, the countdown clock has begun. And that effect compounds the more you drink because if there's more room in a bottle, there's more oxygen and it will kill your buzz, booze. It will kill both. It'll kill your booze and your buzz. Blake recommends that you finish the bottle in three to six months, which is a really fun solution, actually. And after that point, you risk what he calls flavor drift, which is literally a turning point after which the quality and the flavor of your whiskey degrades. 
So if you're thinking to yourself, self, I really like buying very good bottles of whiskey and drinking them slowly over time or saving them for special occasions, well, all is not lost. Blake suggests moving special whiskeys to smaller bottles out of their original bottles to avoid all that extra oxygen. Now, temperature plays a huge factor too. Varied temps will cause your booze to expand and contract, meaning it's absorbing oxygen at different rates. So keep opened and unopened bottles someplace out of the sun and away from anything that might heat it up, like in a dark, cool cabinet. Last bit of advice, just drink it. Blake says if you let whiskey sit half finished for too long, oxidization will change the intended profile the distiller was aiming for. And at that point, you're not getting what you paid for. Now, that's a good point, and I feel like saying I'll drink to that is super corny, but well, you get it. Do you have any more tips on whiskey preservation? How do you keep your booze? How do you make it last? Let me know down below. <laughs> Lastly, a quick item from Toyota. We do love a wild new SUV around here, and according to the Japanese publication Best Car, Toyota is planning to announce the production of the TJ Cruiser this May. Now, this announcement has been rumored before, so we're cautiously optimistic. The TJ Cruiser was a concept vehicle in 2017. It was a very chunky, almost cargo van-esque midsize SUV. All its seats fold completely flat to allow for maximum activity room. And even better, the T in its name stood for toolbox and the J stood for joy, which delights me to no end. The TJ Cruiser will allegedly use Toyota's TNGA modular unibody platform. It'll use the RAV4's all-wheel drive system, and it'll have three engines, a two liter gas engine and a 1.8 liter and a 2.5 liter hybrid engine. It's said to house a third row of seats, which the concept did not have. And in Japan, it's expected to sell for between 23 and $36,000. Now it's not super likely that the TJ Cruiser would come to the US seeing as the RAV4 itself was by far the best selling passenger car of 2019. But if Toyota is feeling frisky and decides to cannibalize its own market and brings it to the States, would you be interested in a TJ? I mean, toolbox joy, what's not to love? And now I'm gonna turn it over to Meg Lappy. She toured uh, Snow Peak's Jubaco Trailer House, which is a custom built outdoor habitat that completely lives up to Snow Peak's aesthetic. Hey guys, we're here at OR. We are at the Snow Peak booth. They make awesome camping gear based in Japan and they are bringing all of that to the US. So this is Jubaco, which is this really awesome campsite, as you can see behind me. Each one is totally custom designed and we're gonna go inside and check it out. So welcome, I wish that this was my house. This is bigger than my New York City apartment. This one is fully kitted out. It's got a toilet, a shower, a sink. As you can see, it's pretty minimalist. Basically the intention is to get more people outside. And so in Japan, 7% of people go camping. And so this is an easy way you put it in you know, a beautiful location. I mean, I would be more likely to go camping if this was where I was going. And it's designed and built out by the same guy who is designing and building the Tokyo Olympic Stadium, which is pretty great. His name is Kengo Kuma. So as you can see, they've kind of decked it all out. This is a super built out version of Chewbacca, but you can get it at a very minimal staged down version. So obviously with something that's this built out, it's easy to make a comparison to an RV or an Airstream. The differences, which I think are pretty blatant as you look around, you walk in here and it's very minimalist. You know, everything is just a lot of wood and it really reminds you of nature. This one isn't meant to move around as much. You can pick it up and move it, but they kind of recommend that you stick it in one spot. The doors are literally, and windows are meant and designed to be like picture frames. So it's literally, this is a little heavier than I anticipated. Also with an Airstream, it's a slightly more modern experience. And this one is definitely tapered down on that point. Still just as beautiful. They're just for two very different audiences. 
In terms of pricing, this one is fully built out. So you've got the sink, you've got a toilet, a shower, an air conditioner. Really nice in the great outdoors, but slightly different than camping. So this all retails for $60,000. Every single one of these is going to be custom built. So that price will totally change depending on what you decide you want and where exactly you want to put it. So we look forward to seeing all of that come this fall.